Now I did 21 takes of these videos, and in 21 takes of all these videos, I had something different to fucking say, but... Let's just take... Take 22 and see where I go with this. I think this is the one. And I think therefore it is. Let's just go with that. Now, French decided that he was going to, I know this is the main point in all of these, he's going to drop the anarchist label in 2009. That's what he decided. And when he did that, he dropped this existential debate between all these people about what an archon is. Well, that's more postmodern. The wordplay, and that's kind of the problem in terms of in terms of him dropping anti-statism, which he didn't. He's doing now in 2012. He dropped the term anti-statism, focused more on his advocacy for polycentric law, which is this is the one good thing. His new mode of ideology is based on a positive. It's not against. It's for something. It's in the name, so there's a there's a positive in this. So I think he's gonna fall into sort of a new ideology label or an old one. He's gonna fall into something that's gonna be more concrete. But basically Kind of like emergentism, which he tried using in 2010, which he took from a philosophy of mind thing. But this one is going to be a lot better because it's going to catch on. And if it doesn't catch on, then who gives a fuck? Because it's like... He's reaching somewhere, because now he's not going to deal with the whole... At least I hope not. I hope not that he's not going to deal with a... The postmodern issue where everything's a social construct, and not only is it a social construct, but it's embedded within language. Where, all right, your advocacy for hierarchy back when it was anarchist, when you advocate for hierarchy, it's basically society that's constructing that for you. It's child rearing, it's a parental abuse. Taking it to Stefan Molyneux's level. That's what makes you advocate for religion, morality, and all these other shits. Parental abuse and how society and the education system basically embeds it within you. Especially in the English language. And I agree that English language is very leftist as Grog says. Alrighty, I told you. 22nd time is a fucking charm. I was another 21 takes talking about penises and shit and how when you come into yogurt and drink it it's it's not a very considerate thing to do if your friend takes that cup accidentally gives you an indirect kiss in a way but you know what that's kind of what I hate about Every time I have to make 21 takes on a video, I go batshit crazy and say stuff like that, but I can't help it. I really can't fucking help it. I'm not kissable yet. This shit isn't kissable yet. Mmm! Mmm! No, it's not kissable yet. I, I gotta make it kissable, niggas. So, like... Going into my chest, too. Now, going into, like, okay, I'm going to make myself fucking blind. Anti-statism. In anti-statism, there is a problem, too, with uh, this postmodernism thing, but it's, instead of using the archon, it sticks straight into the state. There is still a religious connection because the state comes from religion, and other institutions, but now it's more concrete because it's targeted towards a specific institution. So it doesn't have that thing where it's like, all right, we're all being forced into a social construct that's bullshit. This egalitarianism, this sort of 
pseudo, this change in the dialectic, this, that kind of bullshit. Where, instead of it being applied to, like, an aspect of human nature, where there's an existentialism applied to it, there's a problem of perspective. Now it's just completely postmodern. It's embedded in our language and embedded in our the way we are raised as a society. So I think that with all these debates and arguments, I think Fringe just wanted a more concrete idea to, to present. And that's where he came up with polycentric law. That it's definitely more concrete than a simple hatred of a mode of organization slash hierarchy or an institution. It doesn't suffer the existential issue of the individual's way of constructing things like how I might perceive shit based on the illusions my brain creates for me. There isn't that kind of issue where I have to advocate it through this way. And the thing about Fringe is that he wants to make the best arguments, the most logical, the most pragmatic arguments, not the moral arguments, not the voluntarist arguments. No offense to voluntarism because I told you they have flaws, but they mean well. They mean swell. I like some of what they say. Some of it is very true. But what? F so that's why he did more nihilism for a while, because he was sick of all these ridiculous arguments for an ancap society, for a uh, stateless libertarian society, whatever you name it. He was getting sick of that, and that's kind of what he's trying to do. He's trying to, little by little, year by year, make it so that we can advocate for these things in the most pragmatic fashion. And polycentricism is like the next way to go. I don't think it's the final way to go. Hope it is. Hopefully he attaches a pretty name to it. That is an emergentism because that didn't catch on. But there you go. That's basically what I hope. I mean, other than that, uh... It's gross. I don't even care if it's gross. I don't even care if you like it. But other than that, that's kind of all I can get out of it. I hope that Fringe continues this thesis antithesis synthesis thing until hopefully he comes across a way of presenting his ideas that doesn't follow a post-modern critique where it's like okay well and this is kind of where the antithesis comes in with the existentialism where it's funny they're like okay but what's the difference I don't see the difference in terms of my perspective of a state violently enforcing its property and a fucking private property system violently enforcing its property. And that's kind of what made him change his mind on both 2009 and 2012 of his ideology names. So that's sort of like the existential argument. And once he gets out of that, once he gets out of the language game thing where he's no longer having to use these unpragmatic methods of describing why his ideology was better than the other one. And that's when... He'll fully thrive. I think he can reach that point. I hope he can reach that point. At least until... At least he should reach this point when I'm fucking... When I can drink alcohol. Because then I have something to celebrate. About to get some liquor. About to get some 40s. About to get some Henny. Han? And until then, that's kind of what needs to happen. Because... To summarize this video, he's dealing with 
the issue of presenting his ideas where he's not trying to describe a language game or a fucking social construct to his problem where states are just things that are constructed to be good in our minds. There's something we're indoctrinated into believing. And uh, it's not really pragmatic. Where does, at what point does the United States become Mexico? And then it can move to a point where he's talking about fucking. He doesn't have to deal with the existentialist issue where, to someone's perspective and someone's belief of choice and will and all this thing. That it culminates to them not seeing a difference between what's he's advocating for and what the problem is to them. That ultimately it still leads to them not being free in their eyes. It ultimately leads to them still being enslaved, which maybe it will. But he's got to come to a point where it doesn't. It doesn't go there where. I hear he's got to come up with a really right-wing, authoritarian, kiss the boots of your emperor ideology. Or he's going to come up with something that's so specific that it's no longer about ruling or being ruled. It's more about the mode of it. Just the very mode of it. How you want to do it. How you want to present a society. And... Polycentricism, if that's the way it's going to go, I'm really pissed that I can't pronounce it right then. You know what, that's, that's how it is. All I know is, is that I really hope for the best. I really want to get my liquor on. And I really can't do that in front of the camera right now, but I really hope that's how it's going to happen. So, this is Mr. Wonka 7. And it's probably going to be the best line I've ever seen in this fucking video. And I'm so glad I can still say this because nobody made a comment on that one in May. But suck my dick, nigga. And what?